flexibility to keep your knee tight inside the space here, you can extend your leg a little bit, invert, and get back to the guard. And then we switch sides, they start to go that way. So I'm grabbing off my inside leg, ball of my foot is pushing 
pushing off the ground. My elbow is also pushing off the ground, helping me elevate my hip. And then I'm tucking my butt to the far side of Jan's hips. And catching her with this step. Everybody got that? That's the door. Yeah. Like you got to press back, right? Yeah. Yeah, so when he goes that way, you go to your left ear. There you go. Yeah, that's it.
So this frame, which will go on the outside of my knee, it can go on the inside. If you're a little bit more flexible, this is you know, something that not everyone can do. So this is not wrong to do it. Usually for most people to keep their knees a little bit closer together and have this arm on the outside is just a little more functional. So it's not a matter of like, this is right, this is wrong. It's just not everyone, I can stick my knee way up into my armpit. And I like, so this is comfortable for me. If it's comfortable for you, you can do this as well. But this is good here. And then this leg stays high. So she's circling this way. I can pretty much just kind of hang out here. And I can always, if she decides to change directions all of a sudden, It's hard to do, but now circle after here and start. Then we can always go back to that if we need to, but go back to here. She wants to change directions. I can hook and put, like, there's all kinds of things I can do to prevent a sudden transfer from way over here to way over here. She's not just going to appear here and force me to brand it. If she tries to, I can highlight very easily because of how extended this well extended, because of how uh, much of a like a series of joints I've got in the way, I don't have to worry about the compression of my leg and having to sort of start going this way. To where now it might be too late for me to high leg, but because I'm here like this, as she goes to go this way, it's much easier for me to high leg because I can utilize the articulation of my knee and my hip to allow this leg to fold and then cross my other leg over. So ideally, she starts to circle, I'm fine. She goes to go the other way, I'm also fine. So I should never have to grant it. It's only if somebody very quickly overwhelms your processor, you didn't do the right movement, they end up over here, okay, now we're gonna have to grant it. But ideally, because of the extra time and movement that this buys you, you should always just be able to highlight to the other side. Does that? Make sense? So we start here, the partner circles, this just shouldn't be an issue. They can't pass. And then they go to the other side, and we fold that leg over, and now we can engage with our guard right away. Everybody got it? Okay, let's give it a try. I'm driving in. 
So it's really, regardless, you can see that his knee position doesn't matter, the fact that I'm taller doesn't matter, because I'm actually trying to pass the guard. No one's gonna pass your guard like this. I mean, sorry. No one's going to actually be able to pass your guard like this. People may try to do this, but because they're afraid of you or something, but unless there's actual intent to engage the guard, as though I'm trying to like uh, let your legs come out of the way, as though I'm trying to actually get here. If I'm not doing it like that, person on bottom can't have a proper reaction. So we've got to make sure we're actually engaging like we're trying to drive our body forward to occupy the space between the hip and the armpit. If we're just mimicking it and staying on the perimeter and trying to like do this stuff, it's just not going to work. so that we can learn how to react to what they're doing. In a more you know, live role where I really didn't want to have to do a bunch of guard retention, I'm not gonna allow this grip to stay here for any amount of time. And if we switch to this, uh, this is a difficult grip to break because I can't really like lower my leg any more than I can, like the, it's already been lowered, right? Like my heel is going to my butt, unless I can make my butt disappear, I'm not gonna be able to break this grip very easily. However, if we switch to this grip, once I check her hand, I can move my leg away relatively easily because I don't have a butt that's in the way. And if I do, I need to go see the doctor. This is, shouldn't be here. There. So our partner's gonna circle to this side, and we're like, no, I don't think so. And we're gonna step on our partner's shoulder. And now I've got, I've gone instantly from defending my guard and potentially dealing with the pass to if she stays here, bad things are going to happen because I've got a strong frame on the shoulder and I've got a grip on the wrist. And this grip here is not going to last very long. I'm about to pull her into uh, like the teeth of my offense, trials, or applause, things like that are gonna start to happen. So I go like this, they take the bait, I'm like sucker. And now I'm instantly playing a dangerous offensive guard without having to go through all these iterations of high leg, grandy, high leg, grandy, hip escape, yeah, 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 yeah. I make them basically take a bad choice, which is, that ah, grip's not gonna work. Now you're definitely in my guard. So if you lose the engagement phase, right? Like I wanted to be here. I wanted to get this grip. I wanted to get all this good stuff going, but I lost. She put me on my back. I right away lift that leg, right? So if you take this back to where we're playing a seated guard, just to give you some more context, you know, I wasn't able to win the hand fight, she grabbed my ankles, she scooped them up. I just do that right away. Rather than conceding to here, having her now running these passing routes on me where I have to go through two or three iterations of a guard retention sequence, I go to here, which means I know she can only circle to this side and push this, or circle to this side and try to pin this. I can easily get myself back to a good guard structure. Does that make sense? So just, you can even just start from here. Have your partner scoop your ankles up, hold. I bring my knee to my chest and I check the biceps and then I block the wrist. And that's the recovery motion from seated guard. Or start here, partner grabs, grabs, you just check. And now we're good. We're in business. We can immediately start to attack with our guard. Make sense? So seated and recumbent, both versions. Yeah. Guys, just pause for a second. Uh, I just need your attention here. Uh, just a question came up here whether I want to. Uh, so yeah, let's just go right there. Yeah, whether I want to reach and grab the wrist from the outside or from the inside. It's situational and it depends a little bit on 
uh, your level of flexibility. So uh, what I mean by that is if I grab from the outside, I can't move my knee very much. When I grab from the inside, I can move my knee a fair bit, which means I have to rely less on hamstring flexibility. Like for instance, I, like I've got very flexible hamstrings, so if I grab from the outside, I don't have to move my knee, I can just use my hamstring flexibility to put my foot on the shoulder. But if I didn't have that hamstring flexibility, or you know, if uh, the sizes were inverted, I might need that extra room to just take my leg out to the left and then bring it back. So it's one of those like, it, it's not right or wrong, it's just what can you do, what do you need to do. If you need to get your leg out to the, to the side, reaching around the outside blocks your leg from doing that. But if you're able to just kick your leg up and do it, then you don't need that. So this is a really good example of like, somebody will swear, you gotta have your arm here, you gotta have your, it's, it, what we're trying to do is, uh, so like so it's sort of, there's a, a purpose being served, there's a function we're trying to achieve, and that function is I need to block this and get my leg free of his hand. Whatever does that is fine. Right? So doing this, fine, doing this, fine. You know, I'm still holding the wrist, I'm still holding the wrist. If you want to attack triangles, it's definitely going to be easier if you have the wrist like from the outside and already way out of your way because now I've got a really strong frame that keeps this arm from coming back in. If I want to attack a triangle from here, this is a little bit awkward. I've got to shoot over my own arm when I let go. He's going to be able to bring his hand back inside. So, uh, you know, I probably just made that unnecessarily complicated, but the point is try it kind of both ways, see what works for you, and as you get better at it, you'll kind of be able to decide, like, ah, yeah, that felt right. Uh, I, I, that's, I wanted the triangle, I, I knew I could get it, so I don't mean I knew I could get the triangle, I mean I knew I could get the grip and get my foot on the shoulder, and so that made more sense. Whereas if, I, like, I tried to go, oh man, that's, that's definitely not working, I need to do that just to be safe. Forget about the triangle, just don't get your guard passed. More from the inside. Does that help? Okay, let's keep going, guys. Does that feel better, Avery? Try to go to the biceps though. I notice you're kind of going to hips a lot or you're trying to like elbow push. Just try to get to the biceps. Yeah. Biceps, yeah, there you go. I feel like the bicep kind of turns into an elbow push. Oh, it can, yes. Yes, that's right, that's right, yes. Yeah. yeah, we're basically articulating around this, uh, like the end of this leaf. Like, not too much love. I don't want to say never, but for now, let's try not. Okay, guys, we're going to do a, a round of uh, just playing with this position. Uh, uh, one thing I do want to point out just before we do that, uh, especially for some of the more uh, beginner folks in here, there's a really powerful tendency that people have to leg press when they're doing guard retention. Again, it's, uh, I hesitate to say something's always wrong. It's almost always wrong to do this when you're playing guard. Like, you know, again, if you play spider guard, there's times you want to extend your legs. But for the most part here, any action that creates this opening is going to be bad. However, you can do this if you're a big, strong guy and you like leg press people away from you and you get tons of success with it against smaller people who don't know that much. Which is, you know, frankly, if you're a big strong guy, a lot of who you're rolling with. So it, you, it's, it's, a, it's basically a big false positive. You're getting the right result for the wrong reason. You're not doing the movements correctly and then when you actually roll with somebody who's about your size and kind of good and you go to do this, one, you won't move them very much, two, they'll immediately redirect your legs and you'll have this giant opening for them to easily occupy. And because they're your size, you won't get out. So I would strongly encourage you to try to rein in this instinct of pushing your legs away. When we play guard, probably 95% of the time, we want our knees on our shoulders, if you can get them there. Not everyone can, but the closer they are to your shoulders, the better off you are. The farther away your legs are, the worse off you are. That's a simple heuristic for now. Cut it. Yes. So what if their shoulder is far enough away they have to extend it and just not go to the shoulder again? Yeah, so it, can I just... 
So yeah, if I do this now, your shoulder is where? I'm not having nerves. Yeah, I shouldn't have. If you're actually trying to pass my, this is again, this is why I mentioned it a couple of times. I'll probably have to mention it again. The top person has to be trying to pass. Uh, there's a just dramatic difference between, it's like, I don't know, one of you, the jiu jitsu instructor, uses boxing analogies. But I'm like, man, I'm great at boxing. Look at me. I'm out here. I'm dang, I'm doing all this stuff. You're like, dude, I'm not even trying to punch you. Like, so for me to actually have to react correctly, we've got to be here where the threat of me actually hitting you is sufficient for you to actually have to react. Whereas if you started reacting before I did that, you might actually create the opening. And then I might be able to explain, you get what I'm saying? So like, you know, if I'm here and let's just stay where you are, I'm like, oh crap, let me grand me. Like do a guard or take like this. I would actually be giving you a, a bunch of unnecessary offense. So that's how we have to think of it. Is there's, a, there's a range here where these movements are appropriate. And that range is you're trying to come and get me, your shoulders are coming towards me, your shins are coming towards me, your hips are coming towards me, your head is coming towards me. If I don't have that, if I don't feel that pressure, I just don't do any of this, right? Like, I, I, I'll try to roll with everybody today because I mean, I'm, other than my finger, I'm basically uninjured and I'm in pretty decent shape because I've been competing recently. So like when I do this, sometimes I, I start here and go ahead and grab, and I'm just like, and I just do this, and I just see because they're like they're so shit scared that I'm gonna do something that they never actually come forward. I'm like, well, cool, I'll just hang out here, I guess. Like, I don't actually have to do any guard retention. You have to pressure me to trigger these movements. So it's really important that we be reacting only to appropriate pressure where somebody's trying to pass your guard. So for this next round. Make sure that the top person, like if you're not getting the feedback where you feel like, I gotta do this. Don't do it. Don't, don't try to spam the movements that we've done. Try to insert them where they are appropriate. So much of this is about feel. Like, I know I talk a lot about like, frames and levers and physics and stuff like that, but we, we're channeling that through the lens of two human bodies interacting, and there's a tremendous amount of feel that's involved in that. It's like, not that I want to go off on too much of a tangent here, but like, or have a conversation with someone in person versus via text, and like, what's missing? That's what we're talking about here. If I can't feel intent from you, I don't need to do anything. So just make sure that there's intent on the part of the top person to pass the guard, and then adjust your intent based on your training partner's skill and size and all that. You know, if you're a lot bigger and a lot more skilled, your intent to pass the guard will result in you passing the guard a bunch of times against somebody. So just make sure that you, you modulate that, but you have to feel like you've got to do the movements uh, for them to be effective. All right? So we'll do six minute round, we'll switch top to bottom halfway through. All right? Just start like this with these grips, and then your partner's going to try to pass, and you're going to try to do this stuff. Once you get back to a, an actual guard, reset and start again. Don't keep going. Like once you've, you've changed it to some form of offensive guard where you've got grips or hooks or frames, stop. Give them this grip again, let them go through. So we want as many iterations of you responding to this grip sequence and some lateral movement and passing pressure from your partner as possible. All right? All right, guys, that's it. Thank you for there. Okay, any questions based on the round? No? Can you make it 100% successful? Yes, if we're not fine. <laughs> I mean, there are people who never get their guard passed, right? Like, they exist. I don't know if that's going to be anyone in this room, but I know it's possible. Uh, okay, uh, so the, the main problem that people usually have when trying to do any of this like, stuff like this that involves this leg being kind of push, is it switch direction to this side, is they get to here and they get over rotated. And they you could have ran me, but you didn't. Uh, and partially it's because the movement ends up being so quick that there is a, like, a definite point where you're like, I should grand you right now, so you end up being a little bit late. Does, does everybody feel that happening? Right? Where this leg is just like, oh man, it's got, my hips got turned. Basically the problem in a nutshell is your hips got turned. Right? How do we solve this problem? If we're here, so let's just kind of uh, set the, the ground first. Jen's driving pressure to this side first. I use this hand to frame her biceps, 
I know, I know I don't need to worry about a pass on this side. That means I know that uh, a switch to this side is inevitable. It's just a matter of when is it going to happen. Now, when it happens, if my hips are still facing this way, so slowly start changing to the side, like at about this stage, it's now too late to grind it because her knee is so close to my hip that even if I start trying to invert, I'm not going to be able to do it. So again, depending on how experienced you are with this, you, you may have trouble triggering the Grand B. And if, again, if your body type is such that the Grand B is not a, uh, an easy, effortless movement, it, it's definitely a problem. So as our partner goes to switch, we're gonna switch our hand. We wanted this biceps, but the reason we wanted this biceps is because without it, <laughs> problems are going to occur. Even if I've got good knee elbow connection, it's still gonna crowd me enough that I'm now going to have to do an awful lot of work. Now, if let's say uh, Jen moves that way and I did not do a good job of blocking the biceps, what's eventually going to happen is she's going to keep pushing my leg away, keep pushing my leg away, and then she's going to pass my guard. Does that make sense? It wasn't the fact that she was over here that was the problem. Because if I still have good elbow connection, for her to like, pass my guard all the way would actually be very difficult because I never created the space for her to occupy. So she's beside me, but she's still not past my guard. And if she starts to start with the north-south, all of a sudden, I can still regain my guard. So they, oh, hopefully we can talk about that tomorrow. Uh, but the, the essence of the problem is not this. The essence of the problem is my hips being turned away. So if, let's say, Jen started to circle this side, and I, I missed the opportunity to block the bicep, I would do this. And then she would go turn my hips away, and be like, whatever, cool, I'm just going to hang out here. You're not going to pass my guard. So we're just going to replicate this frame on this side. So Jen goes to change directions all the way around me, there. And now I've got all this time to do this. And so now she can't turn my hips away. I can just hold this leg down, keep going. And again, like, it seems like she's passed my guard, but she's not. I can highlight at my leisure, because I established this frame, on the other side of my hips. So basically when somebody, this isn't just like specific to this situation or this uh, particular like guard structure, it's pretty much just if someone's over here for whatever reason, as long as I have the elbow connection and I do this, they're not going to be able to turn my hips in a way that's going to cause me problems. So I just create as close to a 45 degree angle as I can with my, like the web of my hand framing my thigh. The closer you can get your knee to your chest, the easier this is to do. And if you have to do this, it, it, can cre it just creates space, and space is not something I want in, in these scenarios. So, over here, she changes directions. Still not a problem, still not a problem. Now, once she's actually past this like, demarcation point, this sort of center line. So if she's changing directions here, and it's just in front of me, I don't really care. This, that's not a direction change I'd worry about because I'd be able to do that very easily. So don't worry about it too much. If, however, she yeah, suddenly does that, now I want to be or like, as close to the biceps as possible. Because of the angle of Jen's arm, I can't actually be on the biceps. So I'll be on the back of the elbow triceps area. And now if she were to start to come in with pressure, it starts to become the biceps more. And I can high leg whenever I need to. Because as we mentioned before, for her to actually pass, she has to advance far enough that I can disconnect this leg. So I don't try to high leg here. I don't need to. I have no need of a high leg right now. As Jen moves up towards this corner, oh, now I high leg. And then I reset my guard. And we can start again. So elbow down on one side, biceps on this side. Elbow down on this side, biceps on this side. Roughly, biceps, triceps, area around the elbow. All right, so one more time, let's say we're over here. I check the biceps. Jen went to change direction, oh crap. I just make sure to frame my head, there we go. And then I can highlight. So I'm just using a frame on their upper arm, in this case a lever, and I'm using a frame against my thigh. And that structure prevents you from getting your hips rotated in a way that will force the grand. Everybody got that? Let's give it a try and see if that's true. <laughs> I'm going to make a little correction here. So this is related to that, um, that 
instinct of like straightening the legs out, uh, which is the instinct to use like rigidity to fight uh, people's pressure and movement. Uh, and again, that's, that's not always wrong, right? Like if I'm making the elbow connection, I need a certain amount of isometric tension in my limbs. I don't want to be like noodle uh, over here. But when this is happening and Jen starts to change direction, if I stiffen this leg up, it's going to act as a powerful lever to my hip and it's going to push my hips the wrong way. Yeah, and if I'm trying to make this frame and I'm a little bit late on it, this will be so powerful that it'll just be too late for me to do that high leg. So it, what we have to recognize is that when this direction change happens, I'm folding my leg, I'm relaxing it because that creates that is kind of like spring effect. So I go and do that. And it allows me to rotate my hips very, very easily. I, I, it's not just that I want to stop my hips from getting rotated this way. I want to counter rotate my hips. I want to face my partner as much as possible with my guard. So I was facing Jen on this side. And then when she went to change directions, I want to face her on this side. And the fact that my knee elbow connection is compromised on this side, like on my left side, it doesn't really matter right now. I could do this if I had to, and there's, there's, there's no issue there because I've got this really strong. And obviously this is a, a demonstration there. She would do other things and it would be bad, so I'm not suggesting that you do that. But if in the process of her changing directions, that happens, that's what I want. I want this leg to fold. I don't want to extend it, but I do want to relax it. I want to get to the point where this becomes this while reinforcing my base on this side. So if I'm on this side and Jen's changed directions, I want to fold this and orient my hips towards her and get this frame, like, and ideally it's somewhere around there. Uh, I could, if I had to, I could just do this instead. But you see how that works? The rigidity of this leg works against me every single time. I want to fold this and bring this into place. And, and, and an important thing to note, what I'm talking about here is not this sort of stuff. Like I'm not trying to externally rotate my hip and bring my foot in an arc like this. If you can do that, it's great to do it. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just for those of us who don't have incredibly flexible hips, try to create this external rotation and bring this in front. It's, it's a compromised movement. What we're looking to do is fold and turn our hips so that I'm basically doing a switch, right? High to low with my legs without having to do that, right? Like I'm not trying to do, I'm not trying to fold this and like circle my foot over this way. Again, if you can do it, cool, great for you. What I'm trying to do is fold this so I can push off with this arm to spring my hips this way so that I can just make a very small arc and put my foot on this side without it requiring this kind of movement. Again, if you can do it, great. It just means that you're buying yourself more degrees of motion before you're in danger. So I'm not calling it wrong. It's just for people who are not, you know, like, I'm not that flexible. I, I can't do this kind of stuff at all. So for my guard retention to be functional, it, it has to be based more on this kind of small leg press type movement and not this big arcs where you turn your hip. So and for those of you that are kind of like me and don't have that same level of leg dexterity, try to focus more on that, on relaxing this leg and quickly pointing your hips this way so that you can do this instead of having your hips somewhat pointed this way and then relying on flexibility to get that foot back across. All right, so let's keep on this. Go down, and now kick your hips that way. Yeah. Okay, guys, take a breather, get some water if you need it. We're going to do another round. We're going to play some, uh, some games here with them with this stuff. So get some, uh, get some rest. Uh, we're going to do another round where we're restricted to only certain movements, and then we're going to do another round where we're restricted to the opposite movements. I'm not going to tell you what they are yet. All right, so we're going to do three rounds. One round just like we did last time, and then two restricted rounds. 
those further two rounds, those subsequent two rounds, should be a lot more relaxed. This one, you know, the top person's coming in, they're pressuring, you're trying to defend your guard. The other one, because there's a restriction, it's going to be a lighter pace. So don't worry about, like, it's not going to be three hard rounds or anything. All right? So just, yeah, start here. Three minutes, we'll switch off the bottom halfway through. All right, go for it, guys. Space. So I could actually just like just to give like a really obnoxious example, he goes to drop the shoulder. You know, I could do like cool stuff. Right? I could infer, I could uh, yeah. Uh, well, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was asked. Yeah. Um, that was the part of the second. Uh, but like as long as they don't land on your chest. Yeah. Right? I, 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 I kind of alluded to it a little bit, but like, you know, if I'm here and you start to move around in north south, you know, like there's Pretty good offense available to me. Uh, if I just am confident enough in my ability to do this, just to get my hips in the air, start inverting and attacking from there. This is not an inverted guard. Swerve shuffle, not going to cover anything crazy like that. But I'm just, I'm not worried about you moving up to here unless you can put your weight on my shoulders or on my hips. So as long as I can keep your weight off of them, I'm basically okay. So that, yeah, this frame is deceptively powerful. And that, that, that actually does tie into the round we're going to do in a second, but uh, are there any other questions? Sorry, did that, did that answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Um, Rob? Yeah. So I figured I can't hit the break on this guy, but it's going to have a grand beat sometimes, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but, yeah, like, so, like I mentioned, we, ideally we don't grand beat, because the grand beat is, I mean, it's a great movement, and if you're very flexible, it can, like, there are people who just grand beat for their guard retention, and they get away with it. Uh, the same way there are people who, do this as their guard retention, they get away with like body types can make certain suboptimal strategies still quite effective. Uh, so the grand B, if you've got the body type for it and you're quite bendy, um, and not just bendy like in the sense like you know this stuff, but like if you've got good hamstring flexibility, you can grand like I can grand B and keep my hips fairly low and keep my knees right at my armpits, which means that I have a body, even though I'm not like bendy this way, I do have a good body type for grand B because what makes the grand B less effective is if you've got to stick your butt way up in the air to do it, and then you get stacked on your neck and your spine acts as a lever against you. If that happens during a grand B, it's a problem. So yeah, like if you if you got to, you got to, but ideally you wouldn't do it because it has those limitations. The more your body type is friendly to grand B's, the less those limitations exist, the less, and, and you're fairly, like you can do this stuff, so it's it's definitely not a problem. If you can't frame strong against the ground, the grand is happening. That's why we did it at the beginning, because like ultimately we want uh, like a certain level of redundancy to our movements, especially with something as important as guard retention. Uh, you know, like with submissions, it's like if I try it and it fails, eh, whatever. I don't submit you. If I try this and it fails, you pass my guard. That that's a big big problem. So we need to have. Oh, that didn't work, well, I'll go to that. Oh, that didn't work, well, I'll go to that. So like the grand B is something we should always be able to fall back on, but the quality of our the various body types determines how good the grand B is, so that's why we don't ever want it to be like our primary. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, it's just like sometimes we get some sort of physical limitation at the time and we just use the next cure of. You use the next, exactly. Yeah, like, for, you know, I had a, it probably still is, but like a torn rotator cuff in labrum. So for a while there, it was like, I was supposed to, so I, you know, like, there's a lot more of this going on than I would have liked. Um, so yeah. Uh, and other questions. Okay, uh, the game we're gonna play. Uh, first game we're gonna play is I'm gonna use this guard structure. And frankly, you can use this one. The, the guard structure of your legs matters less. What matters is just that I want you to try as much as possible 
to frame with both of your hands. So we were talking about like reacting and doing or if you like change directions and those to this side. And then I switch to this. For this game, I want you to just target the elbow joint with some sort of grip inside us. It doesn't really matter. Change it up as necessary. But I want you to try to basically rely on those frames rather than on your leg frame. So Andy's going to grab my legs. He's going to start passing. And that's our recovery from this. So when our legs are no longer in play, normally I would high leg and I would reset my guard. Like that same thing happened. And you know, we got to here, I would go one, two, and just reset my guard. Right? But I want you to not do that, even though that's the better thing to do. Right? So again, he's gripping, he's starting to pass. One, two, there we go. I want you to see just how much power these biceps frames have. If I've got a good understanding of them and I'm able to follow my partner, I don't need to worry when my legs are not in the way, provided I don't abuse the frame. Like if I just got to here and it was just like, yeah, whatever, I'm good, ah, oh, crap. Like, off deal, they're not magic. What they are are very powerful, a very powerful layer that buys you time to do all kinds of things with your legs, provided you know you just don't don't be silly. Don't you know, like if I do this, it is yeah, it's going to be a problem. So I don't want to oversell it. But in the moment where my legs are not in the way, I have an opportunity to either replace or basically do a technical stand up, right? Like I scissor my legs, so left leg goes high, right leg goes low. And I sit up, and the tension from my partner generating force into me actually helps me sit up. So just that. Do not put your feet or your shins or your knees on your partner at any point. Just use your hands to defend your guard. All right? Try it out. So obviously, you know, lighter pace, because this is a game and you're new to it. Okay. All right, get to work, folks. So if we had to like, if I just give you a phrase, 
if you can keep your partner's hips at a distance, you, you can go ahead and sit up. That's totally good. It, it also uh, it seems a little bit more difficult for him to access your, your ankles when you're controlling his biceps. Oh, I, absolutely, yeah. Like, I, I don't want to go too far down the, the rabbit hole of, of this because we kind of, we, we were mostly focusing on highlighting today and then framing and, and like reinforcing frames and stuff like that. But this, this idea of checking the biceps and having this strong frame here, if you use it correctly, for one, this can replace a lot of what you would have to do in terms of movement, right? Like if I'm just, if I'm good at this, and I know when it is like appropriate and when it isn't, right? So like I said, if he's not really trying to pass my guard, if he's out here like this, and I'm trying to like reach for him, just swing my legs up to the side, boom. Like it could be a real problem if you're trying to frame the biceps at that point. So I'm not trying to sell it as the solution to guard retention, but, in the scenario where somebody is actually trying to work towards you, this is basically unbeatable. There's just nothing he can do to drop his shoulder on me, and there's nothing he can do to get his hips next to my hips. And as long as I've got that, and it's fairly easy for me to now disconnect and highlight based on the fact that I've, based, I've pretty much stuck him in place relative to my hips and my shoulders. So we've used this basically to engineer a safe highlight for inflexible people. You know, flexible people can do it at a later stage, but we can also use this for the purposes of, the, so like any, if you've done all of the collar tie guard protection stuff, that's why we introduced this drill, is just to show you that you can do this and still do everything that you've done before with sitting up and hip escaping, and, you know, at different angles. In some cases, if I've got this double biceps grip as he goes by, I can sit up the face. That's new. Obviously, if you call her tie, that's not something you would normally do. But it, I can just as easily, in that same circumstance, do that. Because I'm using this grip as a proxy control for his hip. Like, it's the lever to his shoulder, but in terms of the, the, the rough height of where my frame is going to be, it's going to be at his hip. So I know his hip can't advance while I've got this frame in place, as long as I maintain this angle. Where it will break down, just to anticipate a question, is start to flare your elbow out. That's where it breaks down. Because if he can bring his elbow away from his hip. So if he's circling, and yeah, and I'm still holding on to his biceps, it's gonna, if the pressure, so that's why we talked about the idea of like intent and pressure, if the pressure disappears, I need to stop doing that. Or I need to be like really like, diligent or urgent with my highlight. So like if he was, if I was doing this, and all of a sudden I felt this arm go, whoa, whoa like, I'd be looking to get my legs in the way in a real hurry. Because the, because the only way he can do that is by moving away from me. So I should be able to occupy the space. Sorry, I know that's a bit of a tangent, but does that yeah. answer your question? Yeah. So that, that's why we did this, just to give you a feel for, hey, this is pretty good, you can kind of use it uh, in more ways than what we've discussed. The game we're going to play now is the opposite game, which is, I lost my arms in the thresher accident, and I'm <laughs> only using my legs to try to highlight. That's a great. So, elbow, elbow, elbows. They just don't come away from your torso. Play your guard. All right. Oh, um, one thing. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's just a flesh move. Um, the, uh, because our partner can use their arms, if I want to cheat, so if I get you on your back, I'm just like, yeah, that's nice. So I'm just going to stack him on his neck. No stacking. All right? I'm only trying to move around him and pass his guard with like forward pressure. Don't go under the ankles so and just stack the partner, because I have had people like get clever and like, oh, I, I, I never pass the guard in class, but now, yeah, and they stack people on their neck really hard. So do not stack your partner, just a movement-based passing, uh, pressure-based like to radio knee cuts, toriandos, leg drags, that kind of stuff. Got it? Got it, yeah. Let's get to work, folks. No problem. <laughs>
Now, if we had started out and I said, hey, by the way, your arms are a more important part of your guard retention than your legs, would you have agreed? Uh, How do you feel handy. now? <laughs> yeah. So, like, yeah, very handicapped. So, it's not that your arms are the more important part. It's that you have more sensitivity. Even if you're bad at jiu-jitsu, you have more sensitivity in your arms than you do with your legs. The reason this is harder goes back to what I mentioned earlier, which is the instinct to push and extend. If we have our arms here and they're just kind of locked out and they're doing their thing, there's not much I can do that's wrong other than you know, let my arms go way out of position. When all you've got is your legs, the first thing you do at the like, slightest hint of trouble is you start pushing. <laughs> That's why it's harder. So it's not that your arms are more important than your legs. Obviously, they work together. But you can, you know, depending on how well developed you are, you can hopefully start to recognize what your arms are for and what your legs are for. And hopefully, this illustrated the point better that your legs are not for pushing. Because every time you start pushing when you play guard, there's a giant space. And depending on how good you are with your arms and the other stuff, you may not be made to pay for it. But this time, you pay for it every single time your legs can work your body. So that's kind of the, you know, the, the purpose of this. I mean, one is to just you know, increase our leg dexterity and get us better with our legs. Uh, because they are the more important part. Like, they're stronger. Right? Like the, the, the odds of somebody moving your arms away from your body are much higher than someone moving your legs away from your body. So if you just get good at not moving your legs away from your body, keeping your knees close to your, as close to your chest as you can get, and having a lot of the motion just come from your articulation of your shins and your feet, and less of the motion come from this extension of your thighs and your knees, you're going to have a much more robust guard. And then if you add in now, just good like arm positioning. That's what makes guards, you know, kind of 100 you know, percent unpassable uh, at the high level. So, you know, we need both. We need oddly enough, we need our arms and our legs. But you can see how much more instinctive it was to do a totally different movement with just your arms than it was with just your legs. Even though you play guard way more with your legs for the most part. So, uh, like, if, I, if this is not a drill you guys do very often. I would encourage, like, if you want to build your guard retention, this is built, like these uh, two drills, hands only and then legs only to understand the synthesis between the two, but mostly to really increase your understanding of your leg dexterity, how it's required, when and where it's required, and to stop you from pushing and extending your legs away from your body. Are there any questions? Good.